Every time they, every time they got caught, every time a, a miracle happened, then it was only used as support for what they were witnessing, okay, to who they were witnessing. When thrown into prison and commanded to stop witnessing, an angel released them and said, go and tell, in Acts 12, 7 through 17. That's God's message for us. You want to know what God has to say nowadays? You want to know what the heart of God is? You want to hear the voice of God? It's go and tell, amen? He said, go and tell. Satan will try to stop us and, may, and, and use fear and discouragement. But you must go and tell. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Number two, not everyone is called. That's another one of the lies that Satan uses. You know, if you're saved, you're called. Each and every member of the New Testament church in the book of Acts were witnesses, soul winners, that... No, no uh, exceptions. All believers, the command to go and preach the gospel was to all believers, all disciples. If you still insist that you're not called, well, get saved and you will get called. Hallelujah. You don't know enough. That's another. The number three, the another lie is you don't know enough. Yeah. Let's look at Mark chapter 5, verse 18. The you know the, st the story of the demoniac of Gadara. He had thousands of demons, maybe 6,000. So the number of a Roman legion was 6,000. <clears> so, you know, each pig could have had three demons in it. You know, they had a herd of 2,000 demons. You know, so some people think that it was 2,000 demons that went into the pig, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. But the story, what I'm trying to say is, the demoniac of Gadara came to Jesus and he wanted to go with him. And Jesus said, no, go to your hometown and tell your friends what good things the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And um, so he went and he lived in Decapolis. Decapolis is ten cities. He went straight ahead. Now, now I, did a, I, I looked on the map and it's only a couple of days journey by foot if he goofed off and went and took his time. Okay, so he had only been saved a couple of days. And he didn't know enough and it said that he astonished all the people. He went to Decapolis, to all ten cities and astonished all the people and he had only been saved a couple of days. We don't have any excuse, my friend. We don't have any excuse for not witnessing. Now here's where I'm going to make some people angry. Here's a, this is a, if I hadn't already yet, I'm getting ready to make somebody angry right now. Mm -hmm. There are four reasons why you're not witnessing. Number one, you're either unsaved, or you're backslidden, or you're deceived, or you're ashamed. There's only, you can only be in one of those four categories if you're not witnessing. You can't expect an unsaved person to go out and witness. Okay, first of all, they don't have the talent, as we've seen. They don't, they, they don't have the gift of being able to witness to somebody. They're, Jesus is not their master, and somebody that is stuck in the darkness cannot lead anybody to the light. You know, if the blind leads the blind, both of them are going to fall in the ditch. So if you can't expect an unsaved person to, to have a habit of witnessing. And God will deal with a backslider, and they rebel when they refuse to obey God and start witnessing. If you're a Christian right now and you're watching me, at some point or another, um, God told you to start witnessing to people. You know, the uh, some people say, well, I want to witness, but I'll wait until I get a divine appointment. The, uh, that's for babies, all right? That man, that, the demoniac of Gadara, didn't wait until he got divine appointments. The Bible says, be instant, in season and out of season. Okay, always be ready to give an answer to somebody that asks you of the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be spontaneous like that. Somebody's going to hell, all right? So we got we to gotta reach them. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, God gave me four little pointers on how not to backslide, okay? Now, this is a lightning one for y'all's quick brain. Number one, pray. Number two, Read the Bible. Number three, go to church. Number four, win some souls. That's easy. 
You can't you keep your faith in Christ and what he did on the cross and you just and you go to church, read your Bible and pray and you make every effort you can to reach souls. You're not going to it's going to be hard for you to backslide while you're trying to get people saved to begin with. It think about it, you know, okay? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Who me ashamed? Look, if you're hesitant, reluctant, or uncomfortable in speaking up for the Lord Jesus, you are ashamed at any time, any place, under any circumstance. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my Father. Okay? The, the man at Exxon, I'm going to tell the story of the man at Exxon. <clears throat> How many minutes we got there, Stephen? Four. Okay. The man at Exxon, in the early 90s, while I was in the Bible college, I worked at a gas station. And the, the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, commanded all of the gas stations at that time to strip out the, their equipment and the pumps and everything under the ground and change it to this new Environmental Protection Agency. You can tell by the speed which I'm telling this story that I'm telling the truth. Okay? Now, my boss decided that he was going to be ahead of the game. And so he, and when, as soon as he got wind that, that, that the EPA was going to do this, he started his construction, and we shut down the shop, and he and he started doing it, and and he and he let me work at the gas station for the construction workers to run the register and to do little things, and so I stayed employed while everybody else was laid off. I was the only employee that still worked, and I, and I lived there in my van. I was I had marital problems, and I was living in my van right outside, and. Uh, I'm, I'm working there, and they had, a, they had a bobcat with a jackhammer nose on it that they were using to break up the, that they were using to break up the concrete so that they can get down there and change the stuff out. And that jackhammer, that bobcat got a flat tire. And they were, they were worried because it was going to shut down work. I, we, we, here we are at Mandeville on the North Shore. By the time they call the service department, and somebody gets on the causeway and comes across the causeway bridge and they get over there, you know, at that time of the day, the traffic's bad. They, they just weren't going to be able to, it was going to shut work down. And I saw an opportunity to make some money. So I told them, look, you give me $25 and I'll fix that tire for you right now. Oh, really? Yeah. So I opened up the shop and they, they got one of, their, one of their men to help me. And this guy I really liked. I, I think his name was Johnny or Jimmy or something. I forget his name. But the guy that they, that they gave to help me, I really liked him a lot. He, he, he reminded me of my oldest brother, Ted. He was an old pothead, just a good old boy, you know. He was a golden glove boxer. Me and all my brothers and stuff, we were golden glove champion boxers and things. And he's 47, 48 years old, and he, had a, he got a 22-year-old son-in-law that married his daughter and this guy would beat up his daughter and he's six five he's 22 year old young man and this guy was telling me how he could he would whip his 22 he would his daughter would come over there and he would see her with black eyes and he'd go over there and beat him up you know and he could still swing and all like that and i really liked this guy but god started telling me to witness to him and and I would say, well, you know, I like this guy. I'm thinking, God's telling me, I want you to witness to this man. I want you to reach him. Something's going on. I need for him to accept me. And, oh, and I'm saying to myself, okay, Lord, I will. You know, I'll look for an opening. I'll, I'll try to find a way to swing from the natural to the supernatural. You know, I'll, I'll do what I can. And, and uh, but the whole time, I'm, I'm, I like this guy, and I don't want to ruin my new relationship with this buddy, with this new buddy of mine, by talking to him about Jesus. You know, I, I didn't want to be rejected. Uh, I didn't, I didn't want to be not received and things like that. You know, and so I just kind of beat around the bush, and 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 God did everything but yell. I want you to witness to him right now. He did everything but yell at me audibly. He kept on urging me and urging me to witness to this man. And I said, okay, Lord, I will, you know. And long story short, we got done with the tire. They went back to work, and I never did witness to the man. 